It is Wednesday, my dudes, which means it's time for another First Thoughts and Initial Impressions Epic 7 video. This one will be on Wandering Prince Sid, the newest Moonlight 4 star that was just shown earlier this morning. As with all of my impressions videos, I'll give you my two cents on the character. Do I think they're good? Where would I play them? What would I play them on? All the things you've come to expect from me in a First Impressions video. Without any further introduction now, let's take a look at Wandering Prince Sid's S3 animation. The goddess of victory graced the brave young adventurer with a smile. How's that? You're a third-rate villain. So it's time to take a bow. So the rumors were true. So once again, Super Creative's art team flexing their amazing prowess gives me once again more hope for Chaos Zero Nightmare, which is their new project. If you haven't already checked out the video talking about it, I will link it down in this video's description. In the English dub of Epic 7, Wandering Prince Sid, as well as all versions of Sid, are voiced by John DeLuca, who is most well known for their roles on Disney Channel shows and movies, and also, believe it or not, the long daytime running soap opera, General Hospital. Taking a look at Wandering Prince Sid's stats, he is a light mage of the Pisces Zodiac symbol. This is actually one of the rarest Zodiac combinations in the entire game. There are only two other mage Pisces in all of Epic 7, one being Auxiliary Lots, who he shares a stat line with, and Harado, who is a three-star who has slightly worse versions of these same stats. Taking a look at the stats, we have 1,021 attack, 610 defense, 5,474 health, 117 speed, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, and no starting effectiveness or effect resistance. Overall, health is actually pretty good for a mage, and defense is solid as well. Attack is a little low. Okay, let's be real, it's pretty low, but when we take a look at the kit, I think you'll realize that that's not really the main reason you're picking him. Uh, the imprint is going to be attack percentage for the team, and then obviously effectiveness is his self-imprint, and because it's a four-star, almost everyone's going to have this triple S. Now that you know the stats, let's move on to the actual kit, starting with the skill 2 passive, Natural Storyteller. After an ally uses an attack that targets all enemies, activates Continuous Strike on the enemy with the highest combat readiness. It doesn't say it here on the screen, but we can tell from the voiceover in the preview trailer, as well as the preview battles themselves, that this seems to be the case. It can only be activated once every three turns. Continuous Strike is a single target attack that decreases the combat readiness of the target by 20%, and increases the combat readiness of the ally with the highest combat readiness, except for the caster, by 20%. So essentially, it allows you to chain and go into uh, another character while denying your opponent their opener, assuming that you have turn 1. Skill 3 is Narrative Retcon. Plants a bomb on all enemies and decreases their speed for 2 turns. At the end of the turn, detonates bombs inflicted on all targets. And finally, the basic skill, Spiral Cut, attacks the enemy with a machete with a 65 to 75% chance, depending on Malagora, to decrease the target's defense for one turn. Soul Burn for the cost of 10 souls increases the effect chance to 100% and decreases defense of the target for two turns as opposed to one. So to recap, this is a mage, which means he can wear Ancient Book. He has a free CR push and pushback in his kit as long as you use an AoE attack on your team. His S3 is a non-attack skill, AoE stun, which means you can't dodge it because, it, again, it's a non-attack skill. And he has a team-wide slow, so that, that way, if you somehow survive or 15% it, his team still has all of the tempo advantage. And you get all of that for simply pressing an AoE attack. Well, the only way that that would be really ridiculous is if you were able to go first on turn one and use some form of AoE, which... You know, hopefully that's not terribly common. Oh wait, it is. There's a whole play style based around it. Anyways, before I get into what's going to be a rather long rant, I'm just going to throw this quote that I found on Reddit up on your screen. Now keep in mind that this is, as I'm recording this video, the most popular comment in the thread. It says, Welcome to Go First. Or suck it seven. And this is a common sentiment that we've been seeing, I feel like, for a while now. Standard is called standard, at least in my opinion, because it's the default mode of gameplay for most players. Most Epic 7 players are not speed maniacs. I feel like I can speak to this because I literally do 
a weekly stream called Fix It Friday, where I help community members build their characters on stream. Oftentimes, I see a lot of characters being presented that are even slower than the ones that I have. And I always lament about how I'm not very fast for somebody who is consistently an Emperor level player. But I have to remember when I look at Match History, the E7 website, which is a resource for players, that I'm considered in like the top 0.2% of all players who play Epic 7. So I am slow compared to that small portion of the pie, right? If you are a legend level player or a high level Emperor player, you are in the 0.1%. You are like the super, super elite when it comes to gear quality in this game, right? That means that almost the entire players by a massive magnitude has way slower gear than you for the most part, right? Now, it's not just me, I feel like that feels this way because you know I watch other content creators as well talk about and lament about this same problem. About a day or two ago, I was watching Genizod and he was super upset about how he just dies in certain drafts because he doesn't have speed gear. Elf Mage, who is a multi-time Hall of Fame player, will often complain about how he loses because he just got outsped because he doesn't have the speed gear that some of the players on Asia server have. I've been saying it for years at this point. Speed is the strongest thing in Epic 7. When you do not have speed, your only option is to rely on things that basically RNG you a win or some kind of silver bullet character like Bellion, right? Cleave players just ban the most effective silver bullets to their strategy, which are at the moment Bellion and Navy Captain Landy. The result? Well, you can really only rely on Elbrus Ritual Sword or some kind of roulette style unit. And that, in my opinion, is absolutely awful game feel. People complain about the state of Navy Captain Landy and Abyssal all the time. But they exist because it's legit the only thing that slow players can use to combat aggression in this game. Players right now feel really frustrated with characters like Genoa just running everything over. Well, that's because they have to have crazy hyper attack damage to deal with with how strong characters like Laia and Landy are. And we only got Laia and Landy because, well, it was the only thing that standard players could use to combat things like Lua, Nikwal, or some of these other really fast characters. Every time a fast unit comes out like Sid, it just feels bad. Because I know I'm not going to get to play the game against it. And when they finally do give me an answer, it's going to be some kind of RNG bullshit that I'm not going to feel good about using and everybody else will complain about and decry. Like, why would you use Karina? Or like, why would you use uh, Landy, right? Why would I use these things? Well, because it's the only tool I have to actually like combat the state of the game. Look, I'm not trying to be a total doomer here in this video, but in my opinion, Sid is just bad game design. He straight up invalidates Silverblade Araminta as a character and she's a Moonlight 5 star. Her ability has some counterplay because you can dodge it since it's an attack and it requires you to use some kind of non-attack skill setup, which non-attack skills generally, not always, but generally have counterplay. Oh, also, and she has burns instead of bombs, which are just straight up worse. The only setup that I need here for this character is an AoE attack. And then, you know, our king here, he just gets to let our bridge continue our aggression while I deny my opponent's best contester. So that, that way he can then come in and pop off. You know how I know this character is bad game design? Because bombs are supposed to tick down and then explode. What is the point of this character having bombs if they just detonate immediately? At that point, just make it a damage move with a stun. You purposely made it a non-attack skill with bombs that insta detonate to reduce the counterplay of the character. And that is absolutely maddening when you look at that. Right When you realize that this could have just been an attack skill with a stun that did some damage, right, and they consciously chose to make it non-attack skill plus bomb so that that way you can't dodge it and you have less counterplay options to it so that that way you feel compelled to pull for it, that hurts. That really hurts. 
Now on the bright side, Sid doesn't actually strip, right? So if you are a slower player, you got that going for you. The problem is that every good opener in the game strips right now. We have C Phantom Politis. We have Conqueror Lilius. You have Ran, who's basically the poster child of Cleave. You have Zeo, who not only strips, but it's single target, but you compare him with Requiem Rwana, who now also, after her most recent round of buffs, is an AoE strip. And on top of that, Sid as a character only needs two stats, right? Speed, so that, that way he can get a turn, and effectiveness, so that, that way you can't resist his bombs. So you're just going to slap him on speed set. You're going to put him on hit chance gear, give him maybe 200 plus, maybe 250 plus effectiveness, so that, that way even Destina can't resist it. Put him at 240 speed minimum, maybe 260 for the you know ones with really good gear, and just cleave with him. You could go Spirit's Breath or Etika Scepter for his artifacts for long drawn out games, but let's be real, you're not going to do that. You could put him on Chatty for survivability in you know contested matchups, I guess, maybe. But let's be real, everyone's just going to slam Ancient Book on this guy, which is honestly the only reason he feels like he's a mage, right? He's got machetes. He should be a thief, right? Or maybe you could argue, oh, well, he throws the, the knives that make him a ranger, right? He's literally only a mage for book. You know it. I know it, right? Just put him on book, build him fast, high effectiveness, and just win the game. At worst, I think that Sid is just another copy of Summertime Asaria. And at best, and I'm using that term like essentially in the sense of what his most ridiculous case scenario could be is that he's just another walking disaster. And that's just a reminder to those of us who aren't made of money that sometimes we don't get to play Epic 7. We basically just sit there and hope that the RNG gods do that for us. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Sid. Honestly, kind of baffled that this is actually the character that they decided to release, especially as an ML4 star. And like I said, it honestly feels like they... uh they made a really ridiculous ML4 to get you to pull so that, that way you don't have any currency for what's probably going to be ML Senya after it. Again, incredibly disappointed with the way that this character is being presented that is coming out in its state. But who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm full doomer for no reason. You can let me know down in the comments below. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.